Hi everyone! As you probably know, it was Mother's Day recently, and to celebrate, I decided to take on the challenge of cooking my mom's favorite dishes for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Cause you know, there's no better way to show that you love someone than cooking them something from the heart. Even if it tastes awful. Except the most awful part about this picture is my haircut! Thanks mom! Considering I have not cooked from scratch in three years, it seemed like a great idea to choose three dishes that I've never made before. And while I may lack in cooking experience, I grew up watching Food Network, and that's basically the same thing, right? So get comfortable, grab a snack, and let's watch this train wreck unfold, shall we? All right, good morning, everyone. Today is the morning of Mother's Day. So first up for breakfast, I'm making her Japanese souffle pancakes hopefully it doesn't turn out a disaster. So let's get started. First, we have to separate our egg yolks from our egg whites. And I took this opportunity to try this water bottle hack that worked surprisingly well. Highly recommend. Then we need to whisk our egg yolks, add two tablespoons of milk and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then mix it real well. Now we're gonna sift in four tablespoons of flour and half a teaspoon of baking powder into the mixture and whisk until there's no more flour clumps. Once it's smooth and a little thick, we can move on to the egg whites. We're gonna beat the egg whites with a mixer and add three tablespoons of sugar. We mix the sugar in, in three separate parts while beating the egg whites. We can stop when we see stiff peaks. I don't know if these are stiff enough, but hey, this actually looks pretty good. Then add one third of that into the egg yolk mixture and lightly whisk it in. Once that's completely combined, then add another one third of the egg whites and gently fold it in with a spatula. When it's fully mixed in, then fold in the rest of the egg whites. Now our batter is done and we can get cooking. I actually made molds for the pancakes out of parchment paper, although the molds that I made are definitely too tall. I would recommend making your molds shorter so that you can fill them with the batter and they'll be more even and easier to flip. I filled the molds with the pancake batter and then covered it and let it cook on medium heat for a few minutes. I came back to check up on them and see if they were ready to flip and then... I'm so sad. <laughs> they were looking so good and then... Look at this. It's literally black on the bottom. All my hard work. All right. I guess we're starting all over again. Let's do round two. All right, here we go for round two. Very nervous. Now, once again, we are filling the molds with our batter and also adding one tablespoon of water to the pan so that when we cover it, the water can steam the pancakes. All right, pancakes in the mold. We're gonna turn it on low heat and cover. This time, I'm gonna watch them like a hawk. I kept getting super paranoid, so I checked up on them multiple times to make sure they weren't getting burnt because I really did not want to have to make the batter again for a third time. After about four minutes of cooking on low heat, they were looking ready to flip. I don't want to mess this up. Oh my gosh, I'm so nervous for this. Okay. Ooh. Oh, kind of. Whoa. One, two, three. Oh, shoot. Okay. Oh, oh okay. Kind of. Okay. This one is ready to flip. Look at that, it looks pretty jiggly. One, two, three. Ooh, nice! We successfully flipped all three. I hope it turns out good, oh my gosh. <laughs> now that we flipped them, we need to add more water, cover it up, and let it cook for another three to four minutes on low heat. This is looking promising. I'm like really excited now. Let's check it out. Ooh, that sizzle. Oh my gosh, they look good. I think they're done. All right, let me try to remove these molds. Here we have our pancakes and now it's time to plate. It's the big moment. I did not do the best syrup drizzle there, but 
It does look pretty good. Time to go surprise mom. Mom? Yeah? Hello? <gasps> I surprised wow. you breakfast for Mother's Day. Oh my gosh, souffle pancakes, my favorite. <laughs> hey, and actually Chico's, yeah. <laughs> wow. That is a big surprise. Oh my goodness. Oh. Does it feel fluffy? Yeah, it is very fluffy. Wow. Wow. Is it good? Very good. No way. Yes, success, success. <laughs> I had to start over because the first batch got burnt. Mm, this one is a success. Oh, yeah? I can tell you that. Mm. How does it compare to the other ones you had? <laughs> This one is much better because you made it! Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm really glad that you liked it, Mom, but I'm going to be making you more stuff for lunch and dinner. This is just breakfast. And the other two dishes are also your favorites. There's a lot more eating to be done today. Yay! <laughs> After Mom finished her pancakes, she told me she still wanted me to cook the other side of the burnt ones because, you know, Asian moms hate wasting anything. Since it was her day, I went ahead and cooked them, and she cut off the burnt parts so she could eat the rest. It looks like you can actually salvage a lot of these edible parts back. You mean salvage? Yeah, 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 salvage. Savage means something else. <laughs> <laughs> Still good. <laughs> Very yum. Ooh, that took me so long to prep all that stuff. Cooking is hard work, guys. Like, just gotta give props to all the cooks out there. Like, my back hurts and I'm tired. <laughs> this is all for you, mom. I'm doing this all for you. So let's get started on the second dish. So the second dish we're making is siu mai. We need to season our ground pork with 3 4 teaspoons of salt, 2 and a half teaspoons of sugar, 1 teaspoon of soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil, and 1 tablespoon of Chinese cooking wine. Mix all of that together until it becomes pasty. Then we add the diced green onion and chopped up shrimp and combine it all until everything is evenly dispersed. All right, so I just prepped the pork and shrimp mixture that goes inside the siu mai. And now it's time to get our hands a little dirty because we're gonna be wrapping them in these pre-made wonton wrappers because, you know, I'm not trying to make them from scratch. So I watched a video on how to wrap the siumai and it said to make an O shape with your fingers and lay the wonton wrapper on top. Then put your filling in the middle and push it down and you'll see that some folds will form naturally. Then you just want to shape it with your hands and also make sure that the bottom is pushed flat so that it will have a flat surface to sit on. That doesn't look horrible, right? I mean, for first try. And then usually you put like fish row balls on top, but I didn't really want to get that. So I did an alternative and I diced up some carrots and I'm just gonna put a little bit of carrot on there. Basically it's just for color. And there we have it. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot to mention that I bought these bamboo steamers just for the purpose of making shumai for mom. So I'm gonna finish up wrapping all these shumai and put it in my bamboo steamers and yeah, cue the time lapse. Ah, <sighs> okay. I finally made all my siu mai. All of mine are like so ugly, but I hope they turn out okay after being steamed. <laughs> So let's put these bamboo steamers to work. I put some water in a large pot. Make sure it's not too much water because you don't want the water to touch the food inside the bamboo steamer. Then I place the steamer inside and let it steam in there on medium high heat for about eight minutes. Whew, all right, so I've been steaming this for a while. I didn't even put a timer on because, well, I don't know, because I'm stupid and I forgot. So I'm just gonna check on it and see how it's doing in there. Moment of truth. Oh, it's not looking too shabby. I don't think they're done yet. Honestly, I don't know. And I'll probably let it do its thing for a few more minutes. I don't know, but this bamboo steamer, it makes me feel so legit. I don't know what that was. Okay, I'll stop embarrassing myself. All right, I think it's about time to, I don't know, be done or at least take a look. Mom! Yeah? 
This is your surprise lunch. Are you ready to see what it is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. It looks pretty much like the real thing. It looks a little worse. <laughs> well, well, this shape did not look like, uh, like a firm kind of shoe my shape, but it looks pretty close. Yay, okay, let's plate it and get to eating. It looks so good actually. Well, through the camera. I'm excited. Time to dip it in the sauce. And wow. How is it? It's good. Mmm, I like it. Mm. Really? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. Mm. Approve. Mm. Is this a good Mother's Day gift? Very good. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Kind of nervous. Good. It's right? not half bad. It's not as good as the restaurants, but it's not bad. It tastes better because I made it myself. <laughs> so our third dish is bun kun. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. That's just how my mom says it. So yeah, it's basically a Vietnamese rice roll dish. So to start, we need to put some room temperature water in a large bowl and then add a little bit of oil. Then we need to soak our dry rice paper in it for about 30 minutes. While we're waiting for it to soak, we can make the pork filling. First, we need to add salt and pepper to our ground pork and mix it all up evenly. Then we heat a pan on medium-high heat and add our pork and woodier mushrooms to the pan. While cooking the pork, we need to make sure we break it up into small pieces. Once the pork is getting brown, add the onions and just stir it all together and let it cook. So I've been cooking this for a while and I think it's about done. Honestly, I'm not sure. This is mom's like favorite dish, so I hope I do it justice. All right, so this is what the rice paper sheets look like after soaking in the water and a little bit of oil. It completely changed the texture. Like, it looks completely different. So let's get to assembling it. To assemble, take a sheet of rice paper out of the bowl. Be careful and gentle because they're super fragile and delicate and they will definitely break on you. Lay it flat on a plate and then add some of the pork filling to the bottom. Roll it up, roll it up, and there you go. Basically, repeat these steps until you run out of rice paper or pork filling. Once we're all done, we're gonna steam them for five minutes. Then we can take them out, cut them into thirds, and top them with whatever toppings you like or you have in the fridge. In our case, we only had some basil and Vietnamese ham, which pair really, really well with the bánh gún. Oh, and of course, you can't forget the fish sauce. All right, now it's time to surprise mom. All right, open. You made that? <laughs> oh my God. You really went through a lot of trouble to, for today, man. Oh, yummy. Mmm. Mmm. How's it? Very good. Wow. It is really, really good. Mmm. Now that you know how to make it, I want it for every week. Yeah, I can't promise that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the stuff. You know, this is such a good day. First, I had souffle for breakfast. And that was all so good already. I was totally surprised. Stew mai was good with good flavor, but the pork was a little too lean. Maybe that's why the texture was not exactly right. But this is just perfect. The taste was perfect. Oh, I love how it just glides down as you eat it. I'm very proud of you. I've been cooking all day. It's like 10 hours later. I'm very tired. <laughs> But it was worth it because mom really loves the food that I made. So I'm really happy about that. It is so good. <laughs> All right. So I guess that's it for this video. Let me know if there's anything you guys want me to try to make because apparently sometimes it can be a success. And yeah, if you like this video, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell so you get notified when I upload. Give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Say bye, mom. Bye. <laughs>